Hey guys, let's make some stew beef. Now let me just tell you, on the video I'm fixing to show you, I had done a little bit of talking and I accidentally deleted that video. But you didn't miss anything as far as the cooking. I was just telling you basically why I was cooking a meal because Isaac was home from college and um, so I had just done a little bit of talking. So it looks like I'm picking up, um, I'm looking for a knife or something. So just forgive my little uh, blooper of deleting the wrong video <laughs> or deleting one too many videos. So thanks for watching The Farm and Pastor's Wife. Please subscribe if you have not. You'll get to see a bunch of bloopers, let me tell you. So y'all have a good day. I hope you enjoy. Hey guys, and thank you for joining The Farm and Pastor's Wife this morning. Tonight, well today, Mama's baby boy is home from college. He's going to kill me for calling him my baby boy, but he is. And usually when he comes home for, from college, his social calendar is pretty, he's pretty busy. But um, I think he's going to be home for supper tonight, so Mama's cooking a good home-cooked southern meal. But I'm going to use my crock pot. So I'm not stuck in the house. I, I'm going to make him a pound cake. We're just going to make all kinds of things. But for the main course for our supper tonight, we are having stew beef. And I want you guys to look at this beautiful stew beef. Is that not gorgeous? It is so fresh. It was actually, it was actually pretty full of blood. I mean, it had a lot of blood in it. Um, but it is so fresh, so fresh. So. I am just going to open, I poked a few holes in it to drain the, um, where'd my knife go? Oh, good grief. Something's always missing when I need it. Ugh. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to just, well, <laughs> You know, a knife won't work if you don't take the cover off. I was wondering, this is the sharpest knife I have. Why is it not working? <laughs> uh, that could be why. All right, so I'm going to put, I'm going to cut, and I'm going to cut it on my table, just a little bit of onion to begin with. I don't, I'm out of my good onions, and I had this other bag, and I kept it, and I'm so glad I did. And I'm just going to put a few of these down in the bottom just to give it flavor on the bottom. And the rest I'll put on top of the stew beef. This is just a little bit on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to pour this glorious stew beef without the plastic, of course. Y'all, that is... Beautiful, beautiful stew beef. I find it hard to find really pretty stew beef anymore. Let me wash my hands real quick since I touched the meat. Okay. I'm going to use this napkin to throw it out of the way. Okay. So now I'm going to cut the rest of the onion up on top. And it doesn't matter that this onion is getting kind of old because this is just adding flavor to my stew beef. It's not really, we won't be eating, you know, pieces of raw onion. So it's okay that it's getting a little bit older. Now I'm of the mindset, all you need in stew beef is a little bit of onion, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pepper. So that's what I'm going to do now gonna pepper it really good and I'm gonna salt it really good you know we have switched to the pink Himalayan salt and I will say I think you need just a little bit more of that than you do the kosher salt um, I am when I go to canning gonna go back and get some just regular salt um, okay and you can add celery seed is delicious in stew beef. I don't have any celery seed. And I'm fine with just the water. I mean, just the onion, salt, and pepper. But I am 
because Isaac likes a little bit of flavor and I mean a little bit of extra extra and I don't know that he can really even taste it he just likes it so I'm gonna put just a tad bit of this generic and I mean just it's not, probably a half a teaspoon of it's just a generic steak seasoning I have Weber steak and chop would be good um, Montreal seasoning would be good but I just put a very little bit because like I said, all you need is onion, salt, and pepper. That's it. And I'm going to put, let me bring you over here so you guys can see inside my crock pot. And you're also going to get to see my dirty kitchen. <laughs> so... I'm trying to get you guys turned right. So there is that beautiful stew beef with the salt and pepper and the onions and a little bit of steak seasoning. Just a, It's just an off-brand steak seasoning. And I'm going to pour just a... I'm not even going to cover the stew beef with water. Can you see where I got it to? I mean, I'm going to stick my finger in so I can measure it. Um, probably an inch worth of water in there. Let me give it just a little bit more. There you go. Let me wash my hands real quick. I'm kind of a fanatic when I'm dealing with raw meat. All right, let me got, let me bring you guys back over here. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in my crock pot. I'm gonna set it on low. I have plenty of time. Um, as long as I have at least six to seven hours, I'm gonna turn it on low. My husband thinks you have to turn it on high to get it started. You don't. If the, and I love my meat cooked low and slow. It makes it so tender. So I'm going to start it out on low. I have at least six to seven hours plus some. So I'm just going to turn it on low and let put the lid on and let it cook. And it is, my house is going to smell delicious. It's going to smell so good in here in just a little bit. And I've got to run over to the chicken house, do some paperwork and, um, but I gotta put in some feed tickets. And um and then I'll come back and we'll make um a pound cake. I don't know, I've already got a pound cake on the videos. I'm not sure I'll video that, but um yeah, so the stew beef is gonna be ready by this evening at supper time. So I can clean, I can go to the chicken houses and work, I can work outside, although it rained yesterday, so it's a little wet outside. So I'm not sure I'll do a lot outside. But um yeah, we're going to get this supper going. We're going to have mashed potatoes, homemade biscuits. i got to run to the store. I have no flour. I have all purpose, but I use self-rising in my biscuits. Or I use um, Formula L, and I have neither one. So I'm just going to go get some self-rising flour, and um, we're going to get this show on the road. And uh, Oh, and my husband wants cabbage tonight. I usually fix green beans and mashed potatoes gonna have mashed potatoes but my husband has requested cabbage so that's what I'm gonna do so I gotta run to the store get some flour get some cabbage and um, and some buttermilk I need buttermilk <laughs> so I will see you guys when the stew beef is ready so hey guys um, I thought I while the stew beef is cooking I thought I'd bring you over here while I work on my feed tickets I haven't brought you over to the farm in a while you know, my phone crashed and I lost all my, and I do all my videoing and all my editing on my phone. So I actually lost my introduction video. <laughs> so that's why you haven't seen it. So I'm here, I'm gonna take a few pictures, but I was kind of hoping the sun would come out. It's always, the farm's always prettier with the sun shining. So we've just got our feed tickets and we keep up with it on a clipboard and we keep our feed tickets so everything can match and um, because 
what the the integrators want is they want you to grow the best bird without costing them a lot of money and they pay for our feed so they want to make sure you're growing a good bird with as you know with the, a good amount of feed but they don't want you to overfeed so and that's called your feed conversion how much weight you can put on your bird with how much feed and um so that's this is one way they keep up with it is to know how much feed they brought and then when they come and catch your chickens to to take back to sale they if you have any leftover feed they come and they suck that out of your feed bins and then they weigh that and they minus it off and so then they take the weight of your birds and they calculate it in some mathematical formula that my husband seems to understand but I don't because I am not a math I mean if it's I can add I can subtract I can multiply and I can divide don't ask me to do anything else <laughs> Um, but they kids, they do say, you know, you, you always use, I'll never use this when I get older. Well, I'm here to tell you, you do use it, like, especially in, in like, this feed conversion thing. Um, you use these formulas, so pay attention, because if you ever want to be a farmer, you need to know these things. And I'm sure in other things you need to know, so I'm just glad I married a numbers guy. I would be in bad shape had I not married a numbers guy. So, I write down the date that the feed truck came. I write down the, the load number, which is the, the, the shipment number, sort of. Um, that's the best way I can think to call it. And I write down uh, what houses it went to. In this case, this one went to house three and four. And then I put down the total amount that came, uh, which was 55160 pounds and then I add it to my number which right now I have 763 and 300 so I'm going to add that plus 55,160 equals 818,460 and then for mine and Bright's we just like to compare flocks like how much feed did we have at day such and such with this flock versus this and that's just for our own that's just Bryant's little intricacy that he likes to keep up with you know where we are per flock do we want to know did the winter flock eat more than the summer flock um we, we is no there's nothing we can do to change anything or it's just for Bryant's knowledge he wants to know where the flock is so i always write down what day we're on and so we're on day because our houses came at different days so we're somewhere between day 30 and day 33 and and he's really just looking at that total number um to see where we were to compare it to past flocks so and then i always just initial that's for noah that's for me that's one of my little oddities I initial the paper that came from the driver. Once I have it written down and totaled, I put my initial on it. That means I've taken care of it. And I put it in a my feed ticket folder. I have a feed ticket folder here. And that's just for, the, I just initial it to know I've taken care of it. I don't need to do anything else with it. It is done. And so then I keep going. So I'm going to get these done and then I'll tell you what I do next. Okay, and one thing I forgot to tell you that I write down also is I also keep up with what in this column back here, just as a comments column, um, I keep up with um, what type of feed it is because you have starter feed when they biddies when they first get here, you have grower feed that's in the middle, and then at the end you have finisher feed. So right now we're on finisher feed. And it looks like right now we had um, the first totals I gave you came in on the second. Um, we had another load come in on the fourth, uh, which was actually day 32 and day 35. Um, because we got two houses on one day and then several days later we got the other houses. Um, so we have 929,620 pounds of feed. That is how much we have had during this flock. 
So I thought I'd look back at next at last vlog just to kind of give you a comparison to see where we are. On around this same day. Now it don't come the same day every time. Okay, so this was day 32 and day 35. On here, day 34, last flock, we had used uh, over a million, a million one hundred thousand. So that's where we were last flock at this time. But there's so many things that. Um, oh wait a minute, day 30. I'm looking at, yeah, day 34. We have one million one hundred thousand. So. Um, Different things, the, the chicks, the, the, the quality of the chicks count towards this. The season you're in, the, the, cold, the weather, the temperature. Um, so many things um, contribute to what they eat and how they eat. And um, the feed contributes. Do, is, it, is it a good quality feed? And so um, a lot of this makes a difference. Um, it, if we have raised the feeders enough, um, are, are they having to sit down to eat and then they just stay there and then the other chicks can't get in it. So we keep our feeders raised well enough where they can kind of get in there. So a lot of things contribute to how much feed they eat. And, and we are learning this. We, this is our, oh my goodness. We had our, we got our very first flock November of 2016. So what, a little over two years. And so we are still learning. We are still learning the what makes a chicken tick, <laughs> and what makes a flock a good flock, and what makes a and and there are so many things that contribute to that. Like like I said, are we raising the feeders? The quality of the feed, the quality of the chicks when they got here, the quality of the mamas who laid the eggs that created these chicks plays a huge part. Um, the, the weather, the temperature in the houses, the, um, the ventilation, the lights, so many things play a huge, you just don't know. There is so, and I am, my husband's getting it down pat, but I am still like, I don't understand this at all. So, um, but anyway, it's, I'm a, I'm a work in progress learning, but so yeah, we're, we're, not far behind, but we also went on finisher a lot sooner this flock. The, the and 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 the integrators are studying. Okay, let's change it this way on this flock because we want to see if it does better, or, or you know, around the board. So um, so they're changing things too. So we're just kind of keeping up with it to see where we are, um, and to see what we can do better. And um, so yeah. Um, it's neat to, it's neat to, you know, hope your flock does good, this flock, and, and see where it is, see what changed. Um, and I think a, a good farmer who is on the ball is looking at those things. They're, they're looking at those things. Now, what else we do, what else I come over here and do, is we are at day, like I said, we're at day 32, 35, and that was on the 4th, so... Yesterday, we hit day 36 on two of our houses. And on day 36, because we are organic, we have to let our chickens outside. Uh, and if we don't, we have to say why we don't. They have to be fully feathered, and they have to be day 36, and the temperature has to be in a range of 65, um, 65 to 80. So yesterday, which was day 36 in house one and two, we did not let out because it was pouring down rain and it was too cold. It was like 60 degrees, um, 59, 60 degrees here. Um, so we did not let out yesterday. However, today we will probably have to come and turn out. It is not warm enough yet. It is, what time is it? Let me see what time it is. It is 10, 14 in the morning. So it is not warm enough yet to let out. So I'm assuming I'll have to come over here a little after lunch to open the doors. 
they, you know, and it's up to the chickens if they go out. I don't make them go out. We just open the doors and um, allow them a means to go out if they want to. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably have to come over here at, I'm assuming after lunch to, to open up the doors. Okay, houses three, four, five, and six, we didn't get them till several days later. So, they're not old enough yet to go out. Um, on the 8th, they'll be old enough to go out. Um, so I only have to worry about house one and two right now. So, um, and, and it, it's definitely going to be warm enough, I think today to let them out and it's not raining. So, um, we will probably let them out. Um, and that's it. That's all I have to do today. I keep up with my paperwork as it comes in. I try to do it every day so I don't let it get behind. And, um, We've done feed inventory for the week, um, so we'll do that the first of next week, and we send that in and tell them, you know, we're, we're either about out of feed or we've got plenty. Don't send us no more. Um, that never happens. <laughs> that never happens because the older they get, the more they eat. And um, so, yeah, paperwork's in order. I'm going to go home. I've laid out my butter and my eggs for my pound cake. So, it's coming room temperature. I won't start making that till later. I really need to go to the store. So, I may do that since I'm out in the car, out and about. Uh, I hate to get home and then have to leave again. So, I may go now to the store and get a cabbage, some potatoes, some buttermilk, and some self-rising flour. And um, get going for supper. And then tomorrow, I'm going to get a big amount of groceries after church, I think. I don't like to get groceries on Sunday, but with me having Judah Monday through Thursday and um, this week, you know, it's, the chicken houses are ramping up. The chicks are getting older. They're getting heavier. It's, it's um, amping up a little bit. So, um, I may go now and get those things and I may have to get groceries tomorrow. I may have to get my ox out of the ditch. I don't like to get them on Sundays. I don't know. I may not do it. I may just wait till Monday because I really just hate doing it on Sunday, but um, we'll see. So I'll bring you back when we get closer to supper time and um, show you how we're coming. Okay. See you in a little bit. Here is our finished product, our stew beef with mashed potatoes. And we always put a little scoop of the stew beef gravy over there on it and our stew cabbage. And if you hold on, I'll show you how tender that stew beef is. Let me get a fork. I'm doing this with my left hand, so just look how it falls apart. Delicious. Y'all enjoy some simple, simple stew beef.